Okay guys, today we're going to be talking about the carnivore diet because over three years ago, I did a video breakdown of this, talking about what it is, what my thoughts are as a nutritionist and whether or not I would do it or if I think you guys should do it. And to be honest, I was looking back at that video and I was like, that's surprisingly a really good video considering how old it is. The lighting is really weird and it's really, really close to my face, but actually it covers a lot of really good information. But my previous thoughts on the carnivore diet is that it wasn't very sustainable, that there wasn't very much research back it up. But my opinion has changed quite a bit actually. My name's Autumn. I'm a certified clinical nutritionist with my master's nutrition human performance. And that video that's three years old actually dives a lot into like the basics of carnivore diet. So if you don't know what it is or the research behind it, I go a lot into that. I'll have it linked right up here as well as down in the description below. I'm breaking this up into a few categories so that we can touch on each. And this first one is weight loss, because I know that's actually why I think a lot of people lately are interested in the carnivore diet. And one thing you will see is that people do lose weight on carnivore diet. I mean, you're not eating any refined carbohydrates. You're not eating any sugar, any starches. It's basically like keto, but like to the next, 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 next level. <laughs> so because of that, you probably have seen a lot of people lose quite a bit of weight, but here's my concern, especially with weight loss as the main goal. Yes. You probably actually very likely will lose a significant amount of weight following a carnivore diet, but it likely will result in yo-yoing and weight regain, at least for most people. No matter how you slice it, the carnivore diet is cutting out literally everything other than animal foods. And depending on who you're talking to, could be cutting out dairy, could be cutting out eggs, and you're pretty much just stuck with like the variety of meats. There's even some debate in the carnivore niche community on fruit. I'm not even gonna get into that, <laughs> but ultimately it is very limiting. That's just a fact. <laughs> now, when you first start something like this, it's going to be a change. So it might feel different. It might feel exciting. And so it's easy to, or easier to do this type of diet protocol because it is so different than perhaps what you've done in the past, especially if you really like meat or animal products, it's probably not too difficult for you. But after a few weeks or maybe a few months, I mean, depending on how strict you are with the carnivore diet, it is going to lack flavor variety. It is going to lack really the ability to be going out to different restaurants or to friends' houses for food um, or for dinner, Rather, but I have found that when weight loss specifically is the goal, it doesn't provide enough flexibility for most people to stick with it for the long term. And ultimately, because there haven't been practices put into place of incorporating other types of foods that aren't just animal based, that still can help support your goals like non starchy veggies or of low sugar fruits. So, the carnivore diet, from a weight loss perspective, I have not found for most people to be a long term solution. It just lacks the variety, and most people, when they experience food fatigue, it can completely derail their progress and make them go back and do old habits. Now, there is something that can be a really big driver for why someone would want to keep on maintaining this diet protocol, even though it is very strict. And that's pain as weird as that sounds, but pain is a big driver, which brings me to autoimmune diseases because essentially the carnivore diet is essentially a complete elimination diet. You see this a lot in different cases, like with Michaela Peterson, where they just have these really painful autoimmune conditions where carnivore diet actually did essentially save their life because they were able to get rid of foods that at least were making their condition worse perhaps so that their body then could heal. Now, what you will see with a lot of these people who have autoimmune conditions who did find success with the carnivore diet is that they don't want to get off of it or perhaps they are concerned with getting off of it because they feel so good right now and they know how bad it feels to be in pain pain and pain is a huge motivator. So for those people, it's not as difficult to stick with it because not having that pain is more important to them than having variety. However, even with these people who do have autoimmune conditions, who have found great success with the carnivore diet and helping to improve their symptoms, I have found that a lot of them do start to be able to essentially heal after a long time of having essentially this complete elimination so that then they can eventually start to re add foods back in because they do want to eventually get back to eating foods that give them a little bit more variety, but they also want to feel good. It's slowly reintroducing these foods again. Now hearing this idea of like some plant foods causing pain in people or some being toxic, I want to make sure we can cover that because it's kind of turned into this like all or nothing approach and our health and nutrition and wellness goals. It's never all or nothing. What works for some people is not necessarily going to work for others. Now there's a lot of concern about 
lectins and various plant compounds and if it's going to cause harm for everybody. Keep in mind, people who have autoimmune conditions, their body is already in the state where it's fighting itself. It, it already has a lot of healing to overcome. So any type of additional stressor, like you'll even hear exercise being an additional stressor, that's just too much for some people with autoimmune conditions. Any type of stressor could be a negative one at this point. So if you personally don't have an autoimmune disease, if you personally don't find that that lectin-based foods or that various plant-based foods bother your system and that you're able to eat them perfectly fine, which is the case for a lot of people, if not most people, then there's no reason to remove it. Those small amount of stressors on the body can actually have a positive impact on overall health and make the body more resilient, just like exercise. Plus there are positive nutrients within plant foods, not to mention the flavor variety that just makes life more enjoyable, in my opinion at least. Now here's where I think the carnivore diet or the knowledge of the carnivore diet has been useful for the general population. It has brought more attention to the fact that different animal-based foods are really nutritious for us, especially if you get them from high quality sources. Because even let's say from a weight loss perspective, eating more high diets, high quality protein, animal-based foods is a really useful tool for helping to boost satiety and help with a body recomposition goal, ultimately helping with that weight loss goal. Eating more high diets, animal-based proteins also is really helpful for preventing hunger, preventing snacking. So from a gut health perspective, it allows the gut to have more rest when you incorporate more high quality animal based foods. There's also nutrients in some animal based foods that you don't necessarily get from plant based foods or it's hard to get from plant based foods. So like heme iron where you know a lot of people are, are anemic so this is a really big one that you get from animal based foods. Collagen and glycine from things like bone broth. Vitamin K2 from grass fed dairy. It's so easy to get osteoporosis from a weight loss journey so vitamin K2 is especially important. So I do think that the carnivore diet or just more attention to this diet in general has brought about some benefits for the general public in bringing attention to the fact that there are some really high quality animal based foods that perhaps we should be eating a little bit more of, especially if we are looking to achieve a weight loss goal, if we are looking to prevent osteoporosis and just overall feel really great. Now you don't need to be carnivore though to lose weight and see these benefits. So you can apply a lot of the same principles where you are getting more high quality protein, able to prevent snacking, able to prevent sugar cravings by putting more attention to those high quality animal based foods like Greek yogurt, eggs, cheese, cottage cheese, grass-fed meat, pasture-raised chicken, fish, bone broth, while still having the flexibility to pair with non-starchy veggies, fruits, various nuts and seeds, and still achieve your weight loss and wellness goals. So it's really important to understand that there are going to be some people who have really positive experiences with the carnivore diet or even other dietary protocols because it fits their body specific needs at that point in time, which can change over time as well. But that does not mean that you need to be doing the exact same thing in order to achieve the goals that you are looking for. So if weight loss is your goal, you can check out 20 really simple tips to help you achieve that goal with this video next. Also, if you're new to my channel and you love this science-backed information, make sure you subscribe right here. I've got new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you in my next video.